There is a film from decades ago that goes against my taste in every way imaginable. A film that, despite its party city alien costumes and significant lack of quality, managed to creep me out and invoke a strong sense of nostalgia. Two things that I have mentioned before are both exceedingly rare. A film that is perhaps the only found footage film I've ever actually enjoyed. A film known as the McPherson Tape or UFO Abduction, but that's a stupid name so we're not gonna use that one. Directed by Dean Aliotto. It was made on a dollar store movie budget of $6,500, which is the reason the director cites for the found footage angle and while it's not an excuse for those alien costumes, I guess it is a reason. Budget isn't the only place the film was lacking though because it didn't even have a full script. We're not even two minutes into this video and I've brought up these costumes twice because they're just my favorite things in this cold, harsh world of ours. So you may be shocked to find out that there is a considerable sect of our populace which to this day believes this film is genuine footage of an alien abduction. A sect that includes at least one former member of the US military, which is why I don't trust the war machine. And while some aspects of this film are quite real feeling and I'm not one to make fun of other people by just going haha you're stupid because I think that's quite a flimsy argument, I'm just gonna put a screenshot of these costumes up here for a second because it's true what they say, a picture really is worth a thousand words. Millions believe this was real alien footage and probably still do believe that if aliens came to earth they'd rob a spirit Halloween as their first order of business. There have been countless times where people believe that movies were real but this one is just bafflingly hilarious to me. These alien costumes are like trying to sell ketchup as fake blood. If a fully grown adult that pays taxes and works a 9 to 5 every day believes that, we have some big bigger problems than an alien invasion. But before we discuss why exactly this movie is my horrible little child, I've got to tell you what this blessed garbage bag holds within it. We open with a message stating that the following footage is previously government held information from Project Blue Book. On October 8th, 1983, some stuff went down at five-year-old Michelle's birthday party, which her main character Michael caught on film. Really, this was the first red flag that this footage was fake because who in their right mind would trust someone named Michael? Said birthday party goes normally for a while with the elderly mother of Michael telling unfunny jokes that the rest of the family must laugh at and everyone dogging on Michael for having fun with this new camera. That is, until the lights are shut off and won't turn back on. Minor chaos ensues as the family gathers flashlights and candles and some of the men go outside to check on the fuse box while the whammon folks stay inside. While outside, they see a strange light falling out of the sky and go to investigate it despite everyone in the house's wishes. What they find is an alien spacecraft. Michael uses his camera to zoom in so everyone can see it, although they're all in disbelief until some dollar store aliens appear in the light of the ship and notice them. The three run back into the house, lock all the doors, gather shotguns, and bicker for a really long time about whether or not to try escaping. They try to explain it to the rest of them and it goes about as well as you'd expect three men with shotguns raving about aliens to three scared generations of women would go. Despite the horror of party city aliens looming outside, they try to keep it together for Michelle and to continue her birthday party so her special day isn't totally ruined. For some reason, despite being terrified of being seen by the aliens, they don't close the curtains, but I digress. They open presents, have cake, and attempt to pass the time normally, with Michelle drawing as the adults talk and prepare to part ways, until Michelle shows them her drawing of an alien she saw through the window. I bet they wish they would have closed those curtains now. They panic as the aliens surround the house and walk on the roof. One of the managers to shoot that alien on the roof, who they presume dead, and they very foolishly bring it inside the house for some reason that doesn't make sense, locking the body in a back room. This only angers the rest of the creatures, who eventually kidnap the two men who took their comrade when they try to get to their truck and go get help. Eventually, after the panic of finding the lone shotguns in empty truck and failed tries to pass the time, members of the family begin wandering towards the front door, trying to open it and let the creatures inside. But they have no memory of doing so and claim a voice in their head told them to do it. These voices only grow stronger until they have to turn the radio up to drown them out of their heads. As the film closes out, they find the back door is open and the alien they thought died has escaped the house. The family plays cards as they wait for help, knowing it probably isn't coming, and their best bet is to wait the creatures out. We end on one of my favorite shots in cinematic history, which is these three Wish.com alien costumes marching in on their unsuspecting victims. Much of the acting in this film is improvised and 
and I feel like it shows in a good way. Many of the actors had backgrounds in improv and their deliveries and how their conversations unfold feel natural and add to the atmosphere. In recent times, movies have turned to using dialogue sparingly and more or less in order to convey story beats and characterization in a way that often makes it feel unrealistic or as though the characters don't have lives outside of the hour and a half you're sitting in the theater for. You may have noticed that I didn't talk much about character relations in the summary, which I usually do because here there's just an abundance of dialogue and character interaction that is crucial to cementing that realism that so many people have found in this movie. It seems like every line is important to the characters. Everyone talks to each other, makes jokes, pokes fun at each other for things the audience didn't witness because they happened years ago, and in general they all interact like they've known each other for years. I think that many people can also be turned off by this because it is a bit of an unusual approach in filmmaking for the dialogue to be part of the setting or atmosphere rather than a main vehicle for storytelling. Characters have conversations at the same time quite often and it can be confusing, but only if you're listening to everything they're saying and you don't have to listen to any of it to get the full picture. The intention is to let their voices fade away the way you would at a real family get-together, either not talking at all or joining in on one conversation at a time. Or if you're like me and you're autistic, you do listen to every single word all at once because you don't really have a choice. Part of the appeal this movie has always had to me is that the normal parts feel like experiencing one of my own birthday parties through the eyes of a nameless observer, and the characters are all so familiar to me, especially the grandma who takes charge of every emergency situation. Though I will admit that the dialogue could have been handled a little better to make it easier for the viewer. Something I especially like is that the little girl Michelle is a very good portrayal of how a little kid would act in such a scenario. Maybe I was a weird kid, actually I definitely was, but either way I never find myself reminded of my youth by children in movies. Michelle though is very ready to just accept what's going on, the way a curious child would be, because they don't really have any expectations for the world yet. She isn't old enough to have all of the concerns that the adults around her are and while she isn't happy because she can tell the vibe is off, she isn't panicking either. I find that movies often paint children with very adult emotions when that's simply not how they experience things. They don't have the faculties to experience things that way. This simple, rather relaxed reaction is pretty characteristic of kids because while they can experience fear and do, it's often over different things than adults and it takes someone who really knows kids to write them well and to understand what scares them, what inspires them, and what makes them happy. Another choice that is a bit unusual is that the director of this film plays Michael, our cameraman, and shoots with only that camera. This was a new technique at the time of filming and I have to agree with others that Aliado does a great job with it. He films the world the way a listless new camera owner would at the beginning, zooming in on random people until they tell him to stop and trying to get artsy shots of random things like his half-eaten dinner. Speaking of atmosphere setting and half-eaten dinner, I want to mention the house they filmed in, which is very lived in and really adds to the overall feel of the movie, with full closets and a decorated kitchen. Everyone moves around like it's theirs too. Now I said Aliado does a good job with this filming style, but the style itself has some intrinsic flaws. This is where one has to question what makes a good found footage film. The phrase is a bit of an oxymoron after all, because the average person, whom is usually meant to be the director of sorts of found footage segments, is not going to capture a lot of watchable footage. This film is a good example of that, with many random zoom-ins, lots of dark screen time, and pretty poor lighting. To make a believable and therefore good found footage segment, you have to ignore everything that makes a good film. Because for a good film, you need focus, you need appropriate cuts, you need good lighting, and so on. But these things make it feel less believable that the person filming all of this is a regular old Joe Schmo like you and me. So it's really conflicting to evaluate the filmmaking of movies like these because they're almost supposed to be badly made and many of the decisions that don't benefit the movie, you understand why the director still made them. I think this film is not really a good film. It has horrible shot decisions and a lot of it needs cut out, although the director does a decent job at pacing events for the first half of the film. The chaos that ensues within it is difficult to parse at times and makes it hard to tell what's happening, but it's an excellent piece of found footage media and the most realistic found footage I've ever watched. As far as found footage goes, I much prefer the style of showing the supposedly raw, mostly uncut footage with no interview or present day or other scenes interspersed between like is so common with this genre. At the end of the day, I do think this film has incredibly strong actors and an interesting approach to character interactions that I wish more movies would take and experiment with further. It's not perfect and it has its flaws in this regard, but it's a good concept. I also like the direction of the filming, but it's much more flawed and needs more work for it to be a work 
workable technique in my opinion. And I also adore the sense of nostalgia this film gives me and the horrible costumes. The terrible aliens from the discount rack at Walmart. <sighs> I love them. And I will admit that the first time I watched this, I longed for my childhood so hard I cried because that's just how much it reminded me of my own youth and my own birthday parties. Minus the aliens, unfortunately. Or at least as far as I can remember. Cue the sound effect. If you've seen this movie and maybe its sequel, let me know your thoughts on it. It's a difficult one to summarize as it's just one that you have to see for yourself due to all the little touches that bring it together and make the story feel like it has some more meat. It's a quick watch if you decide to, although be for one warned, you're not getting Spielberg. And like I said, it's definitely not a particularly good movie. I'm not gonna pretend like it is just because I find it so endearing. I, I willingly love this little trash bag of a movie with all my heart. I love that it's trash. I love it because it is trash. And if you found this trash video endearing, first of all, you should probably get that checked out. And second of all, leaving a like and subscribing for more reviews like this is a great way to let me know. I did have to push this video back because I was sick last week and I tried to record then the recording was messed up and my throat was sore from recording so I just didn't feel like doing it again and I didn't have enough time. I hope you guys don't mind. You're all really nice and very supportive of my initiative to post dog pics when I can't post videos so I appreciate it. And before we close out I would like to mention that legal problems are currently arising around the Internet Archive which is a site where I I and many others are able to get supplementary content for criticisms of books and movies. Archives like the Internet Archive are crucial in providing free access to millions of cultural and education resources to people who otherwise would never have them. Consider them a digital library on steroids. And what's happening now is likely to set the standard for what happens in the future. So if you're like me and this is something that's important to you, I ask you to consider donating to either the Archive directly or to their fund to fight this decision. Or you can sign the petition at Battle for libraries for free if you're in the US. Links are in the description. This isn't sponsored or whatever, I just feel strongly about it. And if you're not convinced of this importance, I have two words for you. Wayback machine. Yeah, you just shivered, didn't you? Imagine what would happen if that went away. That's pretty rough. Thanks so much for watching. The truth is out there, so go touch some grass.